everybody. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being patient with me. As you guys know, I'm moving an office and I'm moving home at the same time. So I wasn't able to come on consistently like I usually do. So just give, just be a little patient with me, you know, as I'm moving stuff around and as I get settled back in, I can get back to my consistency. So <clears throat> We were doing um, the uh, Narcissus Weapons series, and so I haven't forgotten. We're still on, still on those series, and so today I just want to talk about the infamous smear campaign, one of the weapons in the arsenal of weaponry for the narcissist, the smear campaign. Why do they smear? Damage control. Damage control. Number one, you've been in a relationship with a narcissist for such a long time, you begin to see the true characteristic of the person, Right? Whatever they portray to you, the illusion they have painted, you know, this future faking they have done, all these things that the narcissist has done to make you fall for them. And most people, you know, and, and one thing I hate with the passion is when people say, you're stupid to have fallen for a narcissist. I can't believe you fell for a narcissist. Well, if the narcissist presented themselves so bad, of course you wouldn't have fell for the narcissist. You were tricked into uh, falling for a narcissist. So don't let anybody make you feel bad about falling for a narcissist. You didn't know. And let me move this. All my incense smoke was coming over here. I love the smell of incense, you guys know. But don't let anybody make you feel bad about falling for the narcissist. Number one, if a person calls you stupid for falling for a narcissist, number one, they've never had a narcissist in their life, so they have no experience, so they're judgmental. Or number two, they've fallen for a narcissist and they're projecting how they feel about themselves on you. There you go. Number two, or three, or four, whatever number one. Remember that the smear campaign is basically a... Um, like a PR, you know, the public relations person works with a star or a politician or a public figure to make sure that they maintain a good reputation for that individual. A good PR person will also let them know what to say, what not to say, how to dress, you know, and address questions, it, especially if they know a person really is not public speaker, they will write a speech for them or they'll speak on their behalf so that the person doesn't look stupid, you know, well, when it comes to smear campaign, that narcissist is doing damage control because you know the insides and you know everything about this narcissist. For example, had a young lady tell me, excuse me, that um, when she was with the narcissist, she began to realize because the narcissist painted this picture about their ex and, and how horrible this ex was. She said the longer that she was with them, she began to realize that maybe that ex was right. And the narcissist was wrong because the true character of that narcissist began to come out. Irresponsible, somatic narcissist. And what ended up happening was, is when they split apart, he was smearing her name to the new supply. So the new supply, not knowing the narcissist, jumped on the bandwagon, became a, a flying monkey, and became the PR person, the spokesperson, on behalf of the narcissist. And this is what made it really bad. What she said was, is that she was basically embarrassed once she got to know and had been with the narcissist for a while. She was embarrassed over her choices. She was embarrassed over um, what this narcissist was, what people knew. She was embarrassed to be seen with this person. She didn't want to be in pictures with him and was married to him for a while and didn't want to be seen when it was really embarrassed, you know, but what could she do? That was her husband. And so she would, and would tell him, you know, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to be, you know, he would ask, are you embarrassed about me? She's like, yes, I'm embarrassed. I don't like to be seen with you. You know, you are this, you are that, you are this. When he, when he discarded her and got a new supply, everything that she said is what he said to the new supply. She embarrassed me. She's fat. You know, I don't like taking pictures with her. She never made me feel good about myself. And what he would do is, is take tons of pictures with the new supply, go on trips, make sure they take pictures of the trips. And that new supply became the spokesperson of how wonderful this person is and how jacked up the ex was. Never met the ex, but how jacked up the ex were based off of what the, the narcissist told her. So this smear campaign, she told the truth about how she felt. He used it and smeared her name. Or... Uh, when you find out things about the narcissist, which you do as you're with them, a lot of times, well, oftentimes what happens is, is that when you're in that relationship, you, you don't ever let anybody, if it was so bad, why did you stay? If it was so bad, you know, there were some good times that you had with the narcissist. There were some good times that you had with narcissists. They made you laugh. They were good looking. They took you out to eat. They bought you a home. They bought you cars. They did this. They did that. But as a person, as the character of that individual was just insidious, abusive, verbally abusive, horrible. But what you did was, is you put all the bad stuff aside and you kept focusing on all the good things. 
you basically let the red flags go. You basically never addressed or never came to terms with what was really happening. When you came out of the relationship is when you look back. That hindsight is twenty twenty, And what happens is most people are angry when they come out of the relationship and that fog lifts, that, that confusion lifts, that haze, that mist, that, the, the, that, that what I want to call it, the narcissist flees, you know, that, that focus is, is in tune now. And now you're looking back and now you're realizing the relationship was never real. They never cared about me. And many people ask the question, I just want to know whether the person is a narcissist. It doesn't matter whether the person is a narcissist or not. You have to have value for yourself. And if the if the person is not a narcissist, then you decide, I'm going to try to make this work. Why are you the only person trying to make this work? It takes two people to make a relationship work, narcissists or not narcissists. But you dismissed all the negative or bad things about that individual, and you just focused on all the good things. And that's what you kept for, and that's what they strung you along with. That future faking, they took all the good things they kept stringing you along. When you got out of the situation, you look back and the only thing that you were thinking was, is I can't believe I fell for this. You know, I feel so stupid. All this time, they never cared. I was the one who brought in the money. I was the one who paid the bills. Or if they did, I was the one who managed it. This person is irresponsible. This person is this. Or, you know, I can't. Now you have a hindsight. It's 2020. I can't believe this. You know, and the smear campaign has already started because they know you know all these things about them. So the one thing that they have to do, well, many things that they have to do, they plant the seeds of doubt in other people's mind. Remember, if it's not the whole truth and you put partial truth with a lie, it becomes a lie. There's no such thing as partial truth. And that is some of the truth. No, that's a lie. If you take pieces of truth and put it in with a lie, or you take pieces of lies and put it in with the truth, it's still a lie. And that's what they do. They take pieces and parts of truth and they mix it up with the lie. So it sounds believable. That's why many people fall for it. Yes, I, uh, I cheated on her or I cheated on him. And yes, I was never a good mother or a good father. And yes, I messed up the marriage. And yes, I did this, but they never forgave me. You know, he or she never forgave me. And so it just never worked. No, what they didn't tell you is, is that every time they forgave, they kept doing the exact same thing. But by the time they tell the story, it's, I, you know, I did what I did and I made a mistake and I'm a different woman. I'm a different man. And they just won't forgive me. They just, you know, and I just, it couldn't take it anymore. They always blame me. They always were suspicious. The reason why, see, you see how they take pieces and parts of truth. The reason why they're always suspicious because the moment they, uh, they forgive you the next day, you do something else. And that's usually how it goes. The next day you do something else, right? The next day they, 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 they lie, they cheat, they steal, you know, and you just can't trust them because they keep doing the same thing over and over again. But by the time they tell that to someone else, they take pieces and parts of truth and they plant those seeds of doubt in other people. Or there's these wonderful people. And, they, and remember, you know, narcissists portray themselves within the community of being these wonderful, wonderful people. And then what happens is, is they always make sure because they know eventually they may meet you. You know, the other people may meet you even when you're in the relationship. That's the sad part. They smear your name even while you're in the relationship. And they always plant seeds of doubt in other people's uh, minds because they want the people for themselves. They want all the credit for themselves because if the other people meet you, they begin to have some doubt in their mind too. Like, wait a minute, this person and this person, you two don't even look like you belong together. You don't sound like you. This person's, and this is, you know, now that they see you, they're like, all these things that he or she has said about you doesn't fit your character or fit your, so they don't ever want people to get to know you because they know that it's a lie that they're telling. They're trying to make themselves look good because they know that there's a possibility you may tell the truth. The truth will be revealed. And then to separate you from other people, to keep you separate from other people, because they know that with family and friends, you're going to tell the truth. So they have to smear their name to keep their reputation intact. And they really don't have a reputation. They just try to keep their reputation intact by making you look bad. You ever seen where you have like these, these, these friends, you got all these friends and you got the one good looking friend, the one ugly friend. And they always make sure they keep the ugly friend around because it makes the pretty friend looks better, look better, right? Well, everybody has their own choices. So there's no such thing as an ugly friend. You see what I mean? But you see how arrogant the other friend is by assuming that if I keep the ugly friend around, that people would give me all the attention. So I have to keep you around. And then I have to dog you out and make you look bad in front of other people to let them know how much I'm trying to help you as if that's a charity case or something, right? Well, that's the same thing that the narcissist does. You know, they have to make sure they let everybody know that you're irresponsible. You don't know how to spend money. 
you mess up the finances. You don't know how to do this. When in actuality, they're projecting themselves onto you. They're telling everybody about themselves, but they put them in form of you so that people don't have a trust for you or people have a disdain for you. And they gather these flying monkeys and these people in their circles to keep you distant from them. Now, there are some people that are neutral. There are some people like family and friends that are neutral, that know the truth. There are some people that are neutral friends that were friends, you know, but already knew. They just didn't want to say anything. And then there are some people that are going to remain the fly. I mean, the flying monkeys and they're going to remain the enablers for that narcissist those are the ones that you cut off but the smear campaign is basically to cover themselves the smear campaign is bed is, is really damage control because they're going to say everything about themselves they project it on you remember i did the projection video go back and watch the projection video they're going to project their instabilities their shortcomings and everything that's negative about themselves they're going to project it and make it seem like it's you so by the time they tell people about you they're telling people about themselves and not you, or even if you do have some shortcomings, they'll take it and highlight those shortcomings as if it's the worst thing that could ever happen in, in the whole world. You know, I mean, just she got split ends. And so now all of a sudden you don't take care of yourself. You don't take a bath. You don't comb your hair or brush your teeth. Where did that come from with split ends? Don't most people have split ends? You know, but think about how stupid that sounds. You know, so this is the smear campaign, damage control to make sure they always, they, they cannot handle constructive criticism. Most, you need constructive criticism in your life to help you to correct as you go, correct as you go. There's no such thing as a perfect person. So you got to correct as you go. And if you don't have constructive criticism, you'll never grow. A narcissist cannot handle constructive criticism because they're perfect. In their mind, they're perfect. So anytime you tell them of their shortcomings, it's a, it's a personal attack against them in their mind. It's a personal attack, any kind of shortcoming. And so they do the smear campaign because they have to maintain their perfection. You're the one that's flawed and it's everybody's fault but theirs. Smear campaign. It just keeps people at bay, keeps people away from the truth. It diverts the attention from, from them to you. Everything that's negative about themselves, they divert the attention to you or to someone else. But they will smear. Anybody that looks better than them, anyone that does better than them, anyone, you can listen to them even when they're saying, you know, the only way that they got their wealth is by doing this and that and this and this. And you're thinking to yourself, like, you don't even know that person. How do you know? They're, def <laughs> they're projecting what they do. Listen to them. Remember I said, talk less, listen more. Listen to what they're saying and they'll tell you what they're doing. Anytime they accuse you of stuff, listen to what they're saying that you know is not true. They're telling you what they're doing. You know, smear campaign. Hopefully that has helped some. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for being patient with me. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel, Dr. Karma Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. I got some more um, videos to add to this series about the weaponry. And so you guys just stay tuned. Be patient with me. I'm going to take you guys to my office as soon as I can when I'm when I'm dressed, not in sweatpants and a, and a hoodie. But I'm going to take you guys over there to show you my new office. I appreciate your patience. Also, make sure you go check out my mentors. Uh, YouTube channel is Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. Make sure you subscribe and share the videos. Give us six months with your life and see how your mind starts changing. Thank you so much. I also have a book called The... Um, the illusion of perfection. The illusion of perfection. Oh, unmasking the illusion of perfection. I haven't looked at my book in so long. I've got it packed in boxes. And I normally have it sitting right on the shelf to look at it. But it is it, it is unmasking the illusion of perfection. I knew normally have it sitting somewhere on my desk. It is unmasking the illusion of perfection. It is on Amazon. And it is on Barnes and Noble. You can get a Kindle. You can get an ebook. And if you are out of the country, you have, some people have had problems with those two companies sending. Go to uh, Westbow Press, and you can have it sent overseas. You can have it sent to you overseas. Also, um, if you are searching for a coach, I do coaching services. Uh, if you are inside the state of Washington, I cannot provide counseling outside the state of Washington. But if you prefer co uh, coaching, I can provide coaching outside of the state of Washington. Counseling is for inside the state of Washington. Coaching, which is different than counseling because I will not be addressing any mental health issues. I will not be, uh, you know, I will be referring you out to mental health counselors for mental health issues uh, and things like that. I provide you with information, resources, and I guide you through the system or help you to manage yourself and to understand what is going on, you know, with your, whether you're going through court cases not the court case itself. I will help you manage your emotions when it comes to dealing with the narcissist because the narcissist is doing a particular thing. So I prepare you and give you the game plan of what is going on. But I help you reach your goals, whatever it is. If you're coming to seek help because you want that person to change, but you don't want to leave, I'm not the person to come to you. You have to find a different coach. 
Also, if you're looking for counseling, there is a program called betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. It is a vetted service. We have vetted it, have good, good reviews from many people, licensed counselors within the nation that, that will provide you with services for your situation. And in those services, when you ask for those that specialize in narcissist abuse, don't ask, some of them don't understand what you're talking about. Ask them if they understand um, uh, post-traumatic stress, domestic violence, parental alienation, complex post-traumatic stress. Do they understand? Use the terminology. You know, don't use the, the word that defines the terminology. Use the terminology. Do you understand this? And that's how you get the uh, counselors on betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys have a wonderful day and go be great.